Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tanner's Favorite Things. I am Tanner Knight, and today we have a box to unbox. Gee, what do you think could be in this Martin box? I wonder. Let's find out. Looks like an interesting box job. So I think we can go here. And here. Okay, so we are double boxed as advertised. Let's see, I think I can get this open here. All right, so I've got to this layer of packaging. So I guess we can say this thing was packaged pretty well. I'm a little saddened by the fact that there's not a case or a hard case or even a gig bag with this guitar because I think that it originally shipped with a gig bag, but I could be wrong. Let's go ahead and unwrap and see what's finally underneath. Not crazy about this plastic bag method, but we have a PRS. This is the very first Paul Reed Smith guitar on this channel. The first one that I've ever owned, and this is an S2 variety of the Paul Reed Smith instruments made in Maryland, USA. The S2 line is, is still their USA plant, but it's a secondary factory line that is kind of designed to compete with the more mid-tier price guitars. Like this guitar MSRP I think is $1,700 or $1,800, which is not cheap at all. I bought it used, it's a 2021, so very fresh guitar, but I did buy it on the used market and saved you know, a few hundred bucks by doing that. But otherwise, this is the PRS 594, the McCarty 594, and what that means is we have a 25.594 inch scale length. Seems pretty specific, maybe a little bit pedantic, but that is what we've got. That's why it's named the 594, because of that dot .594 designation in the scale length. And McCarty is, of course, Ted McCarty, the longtime president and CEO and general badass around Gibson from 19, I don't know, 50 or so on till he died. And towards the end of his life, Paul Reed Smith, the maker of this guitar, reached out to Ted McCarty and kind of took a mentorship with the much senior guitar man at that point. But he formed a really strong bond with him and even went so far as to name a particular model after him in his line of guitars. So this is one of their really key models. And these pickups are not the original. So that's kind of the one, the one thing that I want to point out right up front is that these are not the original PRS pickups. Those, I believe, are in this box. Um, let's go ahead and verify that before we dig into what these are, but let me go ahead and see what's in box number two. It looks like we've got a little strap for these strap locks, which are Schaller, yeah, Schaller style strap locks, so that's kind of nice. And here's the box of pickups that's actually in there. These are Lindy Fralins and they are the big single 43 set full-size humbuckers raw. Look at that, they got a retail price of $330. And inside this box is the original set of Paul Reed Smith humbuckers. So those look like this. Here's the other one. So I'll have to do a little bit of experimentation and swap out the pickup that you see here for the one that's in there, but I'm really interested to hear this Lindy Fralin. Again, it is the Lindy Fralin, what did it say? It's a, uh, it's a long one. Lindy Fralin Big Single 43 Full Size Humbucker. And uh, I think that means that it's a single coil 
in a humbucker size format. And what's interesting about this set of pickups is it does not have any pole pieces. So it's just flat, really interesting look, kind of looks EMG styling if you're familiar with the EMG style pickups. But this is a Lindy Freilin. It is not active. You can't see a battery pack on here, just regular old passive humbuckers. But I think that they are a, a boutique kind of upgrade for this guitar. Uh, I'm very interested in that set of humbuckers as well, and we'll get there. But let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see what she sounds like. Alrighty, I've got this thing plugged in and my first thoughts are that it feels and sounds really, really high end. And that's one thing that you can pretty much expect from any PRS. There's lots of different designations. They have the Core, the S2, the SE, the CE, and there's a few more in between as well. So I can understand how it's confusing, but one thing you can count on from PRS is that you can pick it up and it's gonna feel like a quality instrument. This of course is no different. We have I believe it's plastic or acrylic, some sort of synthetic material for our binding and our bird inlays. But you can tell that we do have our bird inlays, something that was important to me when purchasing a PRS. They do make models with dot inlays and probably blocks as well. But I think the spirit of the PRS is best shown through the birds on a rosewood fretboard for PRS. So on the core model, they are mother of pearl. These are acrylic. So one of the cost savings between the S2 and the core model. The nut is a synthetic material. It's not a bone, but it's that black Nikor or something like that. Can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's a synthetic black material meant to imitate the feel of bone. And we have our PRS slight tilt back. I think it's a 14 degree tilt back headstock, which is standard on all of their US models. And we have Cluson locking style tuners really nice style tuners with the perloid heads. As I mentioned, Schaller locking strap locks, always a nice feature to have on a player's grade guitar. And I don't know what to call this bridge and tailpiece combo, but it's the standard PRS variety. And you can tell it because there's a ton of brass in it. PRS or Paul Reed Smith, the man, is very well known for pretty much demanding that brass is in contact with the strings at some point on the guitar. So we have brass saddles, looks like we have brass wheels that control our bridge height, maybe even brass posts and brass studs that hold a chrome tailpiece. So that's cool. You get gold and silver in any PRS combo because of that necessity to have brass. We have clear speed knobs, which are easy to grab, easy to spin. I believe the electronics on this have been changed out as well to a Jimmy Page style wiring. I don't know exactly what that means, but again, this is a used guitar that somebody probably bought to gig with and they made a bunch of modifications to the pickups and electronics and I don't know, I must not have bonded with it or whatever, but I love the sunburst on a two piece maple top. So another designation, there's the S2 thin line McCarty 594 and then there's the S2 McCarty 594 which this is the latter it has the, the full maple cap on it which is a quarter inch or half half inch I can't remember what, exactly what the thickness of the maple cap is but that's a semi-premium feature I don't know some people like the paint that PRS has and don't mind a thinner body like a more SG style body so they go with a thin line doesn't mean that it's hollow or anything it's just a little thinner so that's a designation between the thin line and this, the regular McCarty 594. And the cream pickguard rings, I believe, are still the original ones. They look like they fit these pickup rings, uh, pickup covers very well. So that's a plus. Maybe they came with the pickups, maybe they didn't. There's no other rings in there. A metal jack plate on the side, pretty nice. And our plates here are not recessed into the body. They're actually raised about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch off of the back. They are beveled, so you don't catch your, your fingers on a sharp edge, so it's, it's beveled around there, but it's not recessed like it is on the core. But we have mahogany body, mahogany neck, you name it, we have a scarf joint right here, all of the fun features that make this a PRS. Uh, I really like this stylized cut here. This is, I think, one of their signature features, this cutout, and 
on a, an S style body or Stratoca Stratocaster style body, it's kind of nice to have that cut out. And it really gives you a bit more access to these upper frets if you're that kind of player. Like I said, I think the original electronics are push-pull to split the coils on those humbuckers, and these do not have that, so one designation. But let's go ahead and hear some clean tones with these Lindy Fraylin pickups in this PRS McCarty 594 from 2021. So we're in the bridge. clean tones so I don't particularly think that's especially single coil sounding so maybe that single is a bit of a misnomer on there I'll have to do a little research into these pickups specifically to see what's going on but they have the word single in them there's no pull pieces so a lot of mysteries for me personally so if you have any experience with these and you want to educate the crowd then please feel free to chime in uh, let's go ahead and add our tube screamer to the mix uh, well before we do that let's go ahead and hear the bridge we do have you know, the standard three-way toggle on this guitar, bridge, middle, which is both, and then neck. So here's the neck. Really nice, usable, clean tones. No surprises, uh, happy so far. So let's go ahead and add the Tube Screamer and see what adding a little bit of dirt to the sound does. But before we do that, I guess I should tell you what we're playing through. So let me go ahead and do that. We have our Marshall 1987X Plexi 50 watt head providing the amplifier tones with this McCarty 594. So a really nice combination humbucker in the Marshall, which is then being fed into a 2x12 cabinet here, an orange 2x12 PPC cabinet with uh, two Celestian V30s. Yeah, so V30s paired with the Marshall, paired with the PRS. That's a really, it's not a terribly modern combination because PRS has been around since the 80s, but as far as Fender and Gibson and even PV are concerned, PRS is a fairly new brand. So there you go, PRS into Marshall into V30s in my orange PPC cabinet. And let's go ahead and add the Tube Screamer.
Nice fun little rhythm track there. Sounds great with rhythm crunch in the bridge. Let's just hear that tube screamer in the neck real quick. It's a little underwater here. What's going on? Oh, I see. My uh, wah wah pedal was stuck. So I think our Tube Screamer is definitely better reserved for the neck. I think that's probably going to be the case here on out when we add a little more gain going up the scale. So next on the scale is our Boss Super Drive, Super Overdrive SD1. So <laughs> Pretty nice. I want to differentiate the sound between the Super Overdrive and the Tube Screamer a little bit more. I think that I can do a little bit better, but I'm not quite there yet. But that's a pretty good representation of where I would keep that pedal for the most part. Maybe a little more gain on it. But let's go ahead and add the metal zone. We're still in the realm of Boss. <laughs> Boss MT2. This is one of my favorite pedals. I know it's got a lot of hate, but when it sounds like what I assume this is going to sound like, Pretty honorable with the metal zone. It's not as gainy as I would have hoped with a pair of humbuckers. I think that's probably because these pickups are maybe a little bit lighter on the juice. I don't have a way to measure what they're reading particularly, but I can tell that they're not high output humbuckers, which I think the PRS branded humbuckers are a little higher output. So I'm really interested to swap these out. I don't know if I'm in love with these or not, but they sound really good. They just don't have the bite or attack that I'm looking for in a pickup is a much mellower sound. So I think if you're playing more like slower music or rhythm or country or like island music maybe, then these pickups would be really, really good. And maybe let's add a little bit of delay to them in clean. <laughs> Kind of cool. So with a little bit of delay and maybe some reverb, something, I don't know, you can make this sound a bit more mellow jammy and that's not maybe necessarily my style. I'm a bit more attacky, I guess, on the pick. I'm not a huge metal head or like this wizard on the, the fingerboard or anything, but 
I tend to have a pretty heavy pick and you would expect that to dig in a little bit more with this pickup and it, it doesn't. It sounds really mellow and it kind of like tames the sound a little bit. It's cool, it's cool, but it's not 100% not my thing. <laughs> So I know that this is getting a little bit long, so let's wrap it up. This guitar, it hasn't stayed in tune particularly well for the first outing. I'll give it that. So please forgive me for the tuning of this guitar going a little bit wonky. I haven't quite figured it out. I did just get it this very day. So, you know, different climates, different elevations, you name it, affect that, that kind of thing. So it's gonna have to sit here for a little bit and just acclimate. But overall, I love the quality. I think the finish is beautiful. It's got a perfect little burst around this edge, this beveled edge that is very comfortable. It feels very close to a Stratocaster, but it's also a Gibson E sized uh, scale size. So it's like the 24 and a half inch scale of a Gibson with a Stratocaster-esque body. I don't know, <laughs> maybe that's total BS, but that's kind of what it feels like to me. The, the headstock is completely unique. I love that the strings are straight pull. They do not have any bends in them or string trees. That's a beautiful design by PRS and a very artistic way to accomplish that. Something Gibson and Fender have really not done to this day. So really great guitar. I'm looking forward to getting used to it and I'm also very much looking forward to swapping out these pickups and seeing what the deal is with the original humbuckers. So once I do that I may even make a video of the whole process and let you see me solder some things because it looks like those do require soldering. They're not just the clip connect ones unfortunately but that's okay. It's another project for another video for another day. So hopefully you enjoy this type of content. If you do, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have anything specific you would like to see on this guitar tone-wise, then feel free to let me know and I'll do my best to represent it as best as possible. But uh, one last quick rundown of our specs. We have a mahogany body with a mahogany neck and I believe it's a one-piece body. So that's a pretty cool spec. One-piece mahogany body with a two-piece maple top that is slightly flamed. Really beautiful flame there. Rosewood neck with bird inlays, acrylic binding, acrylic inlays, and Lindy Fralin single humbuckers. I don't know. Regular tone volume layout, brass and chrome saddle and bridge. Clusen locking tuners on the back of this tilted, I want to say 14 degree headstock, and uh, synthetic bone nut, that black synthetic material 
think that's pretty much it, folks. So, again, let me know what you think of this guitar, the S2 line of guitars from PRS, or anything else at large. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So, again, thanks for your time, and if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them in the comments. Thanks again. Hope to see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.